possibly be the Swiss Army Knife of Color. Uh, this is in no way sponsored. Uh, this is just me making a video about a tool that I use when I color things. Um, this tool, I got access to this tool uh, a while ago uh, on version one, and then yesterday it was released in preparation for a public release uh, for version two. So a lot of new features that I haven't even looked at. A lot of new ways, a lot of, a lot of my brief glance at it, I was like, yeah, this has answered a lot of the questions and things that I wanted out of the version to upgrade. Uh, it is, uh, there will be a link in the description to where you can get Contour now. Uh, I know people have asked me about it, having seen me using it, because like I, I do on this channel, I I just uh, use the tools that I use, and I don't really care about trying to do it without paid tools. That's a problem. Maybe you won't like and subscribe, but if you do like seeing some of the fancy dancy secret stuff, yeah, hit that like button. For now, just to date myself a little bit, I went and saw Alien Romulus yesterday, and yeah, my wife is uh, one week from giving birth, and they did do one of the most... Oh, let's not have a spoiler, but uh, if you're a fan of the original uh, and are expecting a birthing scene, there there is one. Don't, don't you worry. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let's uh, just hop in to... Oops, this has a lot going on already. Uh, where should we start? So yeah, we are recording, I believe. Everything looks the same on all my monitors. Uh, so yeah, this is in the Dysim page of my pot right i've been playing around with dyson not dyson dyson uh, so we're just going to turn that off power windows off run all that we're going to just turn this up and go let's start with uh create a new version just so i don't forget but today's the date in that i made it today uh, 8 16 24 and I did not give it a descriptive note at all. So we just have the CSST coming in from Red Color. A lady at a library, a bookstore, whatever you want to call it. Here is my normal upstream node tree. We'll turn that one off. We we'll can turn that one off. We we'll turn both of these off. Oops. And we'll turn this one. And this one. And this one. Because we're only working on looking at, at this one today. Contour. Uh, you can see here. Just like that, um, we are using uh, JP2499 as the DRT, and that's going from, we want to go from DaVinci White Gamut because we turned off other things. Um, so the question is, uh, just because I might get, depending on how this video goes, I might go a little bit farther. So I'm going to switch this to JP249 log, and I'm going to go upstream and just turn this guy back on, and you'll see the color comes back. All this is doing is taking it from DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate to 2499 log, which from what I've been told in Discord is the same kind of color space, just a different just different maths. I can go into more detail about that in a different video, but for now, we're focused on this note right here. Uh, so this is my macro level. Look, this is where big important things go. And big important things are the things that I want every shot in my timeline to have. Uh, it's in layer four because how the new layer stacks work, I still haven't really figured out the best workflow for um, what should I put in the timeline layer, what should I put in clip group layer and all that. And I figure they're gonna change the rules on that. So I'm not getting committed. So I just put it in layer four, do active layer ripples and stuff like that that'd be cool and active like you could just ripple the active layer across all clip colors it's kind of what i want but anyways looking at this we got some fun things uh going on here that we can see just so we're coming in from what i understand and this is why it works davinci intermediate is the same as the jp2499 log we got something turned on there, so let's just turn that off. So now let's get into the meat of it. Now that we're five minutes in, uh, so this this plugin. Let's make some more space. We don't need clips. We don't need the timeline. Uh, so 
in your inspector area of your nose, there is going to be all these features. Uh, open cube, we can talk about that in a little bit, but I'm just going to kind of walk through what's there and what's, I guess, not there. So most of this can be controlled by a mini panel, too, uh, or clickety-click mouse. We're just looking at this image here. We're not trying to make anything special. Uh, out of the gate, we have, whoop, we can close this, we can close this. So from what I have learned it and understand, these are how uh, people like Cullen Kelly would mentally want to think through doing operations, but it's not necessarily how the operations are done in the back end that makes sense. That uh, the operations are done in the back end to maximize proper math and control over moving the colors around in the image that you see. But working through the list is how people think of what they want to see on the screen. Uh, so we're going to start by showing the contrast curve. It made some modifications so you can better see where the toe breaks and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, just coming in, this is, this sets like a, so everything under to the left of all your node layers, all the way down to your shot level, come in through this contrast curve. And you can set it to be kind of where you want it. And so not really trying to make anything else. You can pull up the black point and then you can shape, bring down the white point. You can see how we just, there's a lot of white in this image. And we're just, you know, we'd stretch out how crunchy the shadows are uh, and kind of fold and we can push up the highlights and the edge. And just so quickly, just kind of setting an overall contrast curve for whatever is coming in to this node. Um, Preserve Color does some cool things where it changes so you can get, if you go all the way to the right, you're getting kind of a more bleachy effect. Uh, if you come to the right, left, so that as your contrast is working, uh, things things get bleached out. You can see bleached, not bleached. Uh, so that preserve color. So you can see that on the vector scopes as well. Uh, and just that saturation comes back, uh, even though there's not much change in the waveform. But so kind of quickly wanting to be, which what do you want the look to be? Do you want that more washed out look, or do you want it to be warm and vibrant? After your curve. Uh, which we can turn off that. Oops. Uh, they have split, so split strength. This one is really cool. And they made some changes in version two that I am very happy for. The reason I've kind of started to gravitate to using this as my split, and you can see I've stacked things up differently. I have density going into contour sat, but those are for some other reasons. And I've always put split over here because I have another tool that I use for split toning. And you can go down here and do stuff uh, and get curves with split toning and, and, and get all funky down here. But contour in and of itself has a feature that I love. So if we just crank up that, you can see the instant full splint toad. But when we want to look at that bottom right hand corner of our image, we have controls over the shadow hue and the highlight hue. So you can instantly see versus setting your curve and going, oh, that's a curve and this is what I'm kind of seeing in my highlights and lowlights. I can see by the splotches in the bottom right hand corner exactly the hue at the peak divergence I'm putting into my image. So if I want it to be pink, I don't want to change that shadow hue. That is the hue that is going into the image. Uh, then there's all these other features. So we can be like, turn off high, just have split tone in the lows, turn it only in the high, which is really cool. Um, doing it in my anthology of uh, mirrors of my own personal psychosis exploration thought patterns. You can see a link up there, but uh, kind of just walking through what that, switching that, just switching that between different sides of the mirror where the camera goes. Very subtle. Uh, pivot is a changes where the bends happen, and then subtractive low just changes kind of a like is it subtractive saturation as it's putting it in? How's it putting that in? The neutral segment length you can pinch off in the middle, which preserves your neutrals in the middle gray. 
and where your curves start and end. So curve start is, you can see how it's tweaking that. Floor divergence and peak divergence. Very fun little guys. Uh, but yeah, they weren't in version one, which was one of the reasons I didn't commit fully to it, was you couldn't, there was always putting in your divergence, you couldn't split your tone all the way to the top. There was always a path back to white. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, kind of just have a random one going, but then... Uh, we can just go just click that in the middle. Uh, the sat mask is fun because you can say highlight mode and then you can just say, hey, in these points of saturation, so I can gray out the spots I don't want affected by split toning. And so I can just kind of find where I want that. And so her face and everything like that, that should stay neutral. Are not affected by the split toning it only goes everywhere else um, but yeah very fun very quick to just kind of go through and honestly seeing what the color is in a splotch versus seeing it on a ramp or seeing it elsewhere is so nice a uh, saturation would be the next module that we're coming through here uh, so this was uh, got a new update, and I really think it's cool of uh, what it can do. Um, did we leave that on and split? Yeah, we did. We left highlight mode on. Uh, but yeah, you get to control your saturation on the low end. So if you look at the vector scope, you can see it. But it's it's nice. It's smooth. You can see how I'm more just affecting the mids and highs. I'm gonna push that around high strength, like I can control where my saturation is separately and I can drop out the low end on uh, this. I, yeah, I, I'm still going through uh, and updating things, but yeah, it also has a loom mask so that you can control where these pushes in saturation are happening. So you can make sure and be kind of sneaky to keep your neutral still and you kind of keep things where you want them but you can turn that off and we can say just very subtle tweaks and changes to that low end so cool that you can just slide it on one end versus the other very very smooth very subtle the whole goal with this plugin is to be subtle not be aggressive it doesn't want to break the image uh, it fights it tells you don't do too much you goofball why are you trying to make things much the density uh, that filmic density so we just crank that out and then see what happens there you can see it kind of tweaks that red those red highlights in the background her skin you kind of make some adjustments there you can kind of see turn it on turn it off turn it on turn it off also has hue rotation as well, so you can be like, I, I want to make her the Hulk. So hitting up on the reds and yellows, you can kind of mess with her skin saturation. Yeah, you never know. Just kind of whoop, whoop, make her, and we could go back and hit that green saturation somehow. Make her vibrant. I don't know. Roasty. Yeah, it's nice. She's kind of green, but yeah, just very nice on on that. We can reset it quickly to baseline, uh, but yeah, just just simple hue rotations. Uh, focus kind of just makes an adjustment to how tight it stays on that hue. We can do another luminosity mask to kind of just see where it's hitting, and just be like, just touch the colors there based on that mask just by sliding and controlling that. So, I mean, yeah, just kind of quickly walking through all those things. And then, yeah, there's help if you need help, which, oops, that takes me to the contour manual book. All right, <laughs> cool. Uh, but the cool thing is I'm pretty sure that part of the plugin, you're going to be able to boop and push it 
and get in and then there'll be access to the discord channel where you can actually talk to me cullen and other people that are very very smart you probably don't want to talk to me you probably want to talk to the very smart people in the discord community uh as well and pass around because you can all these numbers a lot of numbers there you're like hey i like that you can export the profile and it just kicks out just kicks out a file uh, you can also quickly export a lot. The other thing is you can see a cube, which I don't have a recording way to set up to show you that cube, but it is very cool uh, to see how the cube is shaping. But yeah, I've been using it uh, for a lot of things. I've built it into my note tree, and that's why like, I am a, I would say, I'm not a sponsored by it at all, but I am a strong proponent of it being you could say a little bit of a Swiss Army knife. And I do it here. I'm going to probably have to revisit how 2.0 affects the choices I've made in the past, the choices I'm going to make in the future. Uh, but yeah, um, kind of about 15 minutes. So we're going to wrap that up. But yeah, we might come back in the next video and talk a little bit more about this die sim because I'm all set up. I might as well just press record and start another video. Hopefully you enjoyed that little like tour of the drop down menus of Contour. If you did, please like, subscribe, leave comments. Uh, I will respond to comments because I literally get like one, maybe two. It's not like one of those other channels where there's a thousand comments and the person who made the video is never going to respond to your question. Um, yeah, whatever that is. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed just randomly talking to hopefully somebody. But till the next time, cheers.